Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is great. Brought the Kindle today because we are going to talk about the book that I finished Wednesday, yesterday, I don't know. And that book is called Black Mad Wheel by Josh Mallerman. Um, I, I believe I got this book in an ad and it was like two bucks and I recognized the author because he is the author of Bird Box, which I enjoyed the movie and I own the book, but I've not read the book. Uh, and because I was just looking for something quick and easy to read, this looked like a good, a good fit. Um, kind of a bit of a weird story and, um, I enjoyed it. So I bought the book, started reading it, uh, didn't really pay any attention to what people were saying about it. I just bought it, started reading it. And, um, I went and looked up reviews like as a, at about the halfway point and noticed that it was really like kind of poorly reviewed, not poorly reviewed. I mean, it still had above a three out of five, like 3.3 .3 out of five. But in my experience, that means it's a bad book, right? Like even though I rate books that way, like a three above a three is better than average, right? Like, but generally when you see a book that's rated below a four, it's kind of not good, right? Or whatever. So it kind of got some weird ratings. I went and looked up some reviews and people just didn't understand it. I very much enjoyed the book. Talked about it the other day. Uh, I enjoyed the writing style of the book, sure. Um, I, I enjoyed the author's, the way the author writes. Uh, his prose is very similar to my own. Uh, very kind of poetic, meaning that he uses, uh, he uses line breaks and he uses, uh, non-conventional ways of conveying emotion. Uh, meaning that he, he uses the position of text on the page as a as a a way to convey importance or uh, a way to write um tense tenseness i don't know what i'm trying to say he uses in moments of extreme intense whatever you know whether it's overwhelming emotion or action he uses brief like one to two word sentences lots of them peppered and in you know they things happen i like that as opposed to just flooding you with details let's make it just confusing so he writes it sort of in a confusing way um the book is told in two different timelines there's a timeline from you know I don't know, six months ago or so-ish, somewhere around there. Uh, and there's a timeline from now. And those two timelines are really told through two different characters. Uh, the main character uh, is, the mem is, a, is a member of, uh, is a pianist from a rock band. Uh, this takes place like in the 50s, by the way. A pianist in a rock band. And he goes, um, him and his band were once part of the army's band they were an army band and uh, they kind of get recalled essentially by the army to go investigate something that part of the book <laughs> whatever like you just have to just go okay sure like <laughs> it's the 50s maybe the government did stupid stuff like that but it, it feels kind of contrived it feels very contrived like, I feel like it would have been better if they were still in the army band. And then it, then it would have been like, cool, the army's sending you here to do this thing. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, so, it half of the story is told from that perspective from six months ago. And what happens to cause this person grievance. And then present is a nurse in a hospital. And those two storylines converge. And then... Uh, the end of the book happens. This book reads kind of like a David Lynch movie, and I think that's why I like it. This book does not give you answers. This book does not give you 
uh, the details that you need to really formulate a solid answer of your own. This book leaves a whole lot open and, uh, and very little of it makes sense. And I think that's the point. And I enjoyed that about it. I enjoyed that it's confusing, that it's, uh, but it's, it's, it's confusing, but not in a confusing way. Let me, if that makes any sense. Like if you're reading the text, you're getting the text. There's no like double entendre that you have to figure out or any sort of weird red herrings that like the, the author is not deceiving you. The story is, the story is deceiving you. The story is confusing. Like that what is happening is confusing. And that's, that, that was refreshing and, uh, and good. So I enjoyed it. I think I rated it four out of five. Uh, I felt like it was a strong book uh, with strong prose um, that had a few, like, you know, the, the weird contrived, we're, we're recalling a band to send them off uh, in search of a national, you know, like a, like a, uh, a weapon, essentially. That's, that was kind of weird, but whatever. Like, it didn't, it's whatever. Um, after that, the rest of the story I felt very compelled by, uh, and I just kept wanting to read it. And so I think I read it in like two days, right? Just a day and a half or something like that. Uh, Cause I kept, I was very interested in it. So, uh, I say, if you are interested in weird, go for it. If you're interested in, uh, books that are about music and music theory and sound, go for it. Uh, or if you're just a fan of Josh Mallerman, <laughs> go for it. So, okay, from this point forward, we're going to... St spoilers! Spoiler alert! Here comes the spoilers. Um, this book will never be made into a movie like Bird Box was because it doesn't make sense. Uh, it's a movie, or it's a book about a sound. A sound that uh, can disarm. A sound that can kill, essentially. Uh, it can disarm anything. I can make weapons, all weapons impotent, whether it's a knife or a nuclear warhead or a gun, it can neutralize all weapons. And so the United States military is interested in finding out the source of this sound and, and either using it for their own purposes uh, or uh, I guess the, the more they're probably more interested in stopping it, right? So the, the government hires this band, or like the government recalls a band to send them to a desert. They've already sent two platoons out and they haven't returned. And so they're like, let's send musicians because this is a sound and musicians know sound. That's the part that's contrived and weird, whatever. These guys go out into the desert, a whole bunch of weird shit happens. There's goat men and you know, whatever the way Josh writes the like overwhelming sensation of the sound was really cool. Like it's confused. Like as a reader, you're just as confused as the person going through it. And I think that makes it work. That's where I was talking about the way that he uses text on the page, the way that he writes these brief sentences, he doesn't give you all of the details. And I think that makes that's, that's how I write when somebody's under duress, because that's how I think when I'm under duress. I don't think in details. Like there's these broad strokes and that's all you're getting and it's weird and what? And there's a goat man and people are being carried away. Um, so the, the, ma the main, the like kind of the original storyline of this guy going through this thing, um, it, was, it was bizarre, you know? They go to Africa, they track goat hoofs through a desert, footprints through a desert. They find a man who's flattened, like flatter than anything could possibly be flat. Uh, also an, an an anachronistic man so there's a whole bunch of that weird shit they find a, a quarter, kind of an underground mine what was probably a diamond mine at one point that's like this labyrinth of beautiful wooden walls painted with goat motifs and whatever um that was all fun i really enjoyed that aspect of it i also didn't mind the ending there's a lot of people who hate it because they don't get it and i think the point is you don't get it uh, the, the main, the, the kind of the villain in this story is a man who discovered the sound of creation. Like that, like creation is a sound. This sound can create and creation trumps destruction. And so this sound can eliminate, uh, or neutralize anything that could cause destruction. 
uh, and this sound or this, it, maybe it's not a sound, maybe it's an entity, maybe it's a force, maybe whatever, can present it, it presents itself uh, to the observer in a way that the observer can understand. So for our main character, he goes into this chamber, there's a piano, because he's a pianist. Uh, for the villain of the story, uh, he sees an artist in painting, right? So the sound or this force or this entity, whatever it is, presents itself as a form of creation that the observer understands. I liked it. I liked that part of it. I, the flattening thing? Uh, so so he goes in, he sees the thing, he plays a key on the piano, and he's like immediately flattened, like flatter than anything possibly could be, breaks every bone in his body, ends up in a hospital. So that's the second half of the story. The second half of the story is uh, a nurse taking care of him, and he's healing too quickly. Like he's been in a coma for six months, he wakes up, and now suddenly, like within a couple of days, he's sitting up. Within a couple of, within a week, he's standing up. They're injecting him with something she doesn't know or understand. Um... And through the second half of the second story, we find out that what they're injecting him with is basically an antidote to this sound. And if he stops receiving the antidote, he'll regress. And so it's almost as if whatever happened to him in that chamber will catch up to him again. So this antidote is keeping him strong. It's healing him, but he's ultimately still like being affected by this sound. So it's very contrived, very strange, but... Um, I felt like it was very compelling. And so the, the, the culmination of all of this is they go to Africa, uh, they go back, they find uh, a hidden chamber with people, with his, you know, with people that, that, that this villain were keeping prisoners and experimenting on. They find the sound. Um, they both have been, in, they both have injected themselves with this antidote. And then he, plays the piano and kills the villain who's not really a villain like he he he's i guess he's a villain in the sense that he discovered the sound that he kept using it he was using it for his own experimentation he was luring people into the desert or or even when you know using the sound to uh disorient people and drag them in there so that he could use them for um his own experiments using the sound but they never really it never really um, details, like you, you get no answers. You get no answers for what this sound does to thing. Like there is no real conclusion. You, these anachronisms that happen, there's all of these people from all walks of, the, you know, all eras of the world found kind of freshly dead. And there's no explanations for any of that. There's no explanations for these ghosts that appear that can interact with the real world and then da vanish. That's all just kind of left up to you to decide, like was was this God in this chamber? Did we just, you know, tamper with God? Kind of. I think that's the way that I took it. Um, but ultimately, the payoff isn't really a payoff in a, in a sense of uh, you understand what's going on. It's a payoff in that at least this guy who's been experimenting with people is now not a part of it anymore. Um, and possibly um, with him not, like, antagonizing the entity or whatever then the sound won't keep propagating and people won't keep falling victim to it or maybe i don't know you can take that however you want but ultimately i think the payoff is that it's nobody's property that in the end it's just nature and and it goes back to being nature and it's no longer being uh used as a weapon uh I don't know. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a fun read in, in, a, in a weird, eclectic kind of way. And I think that I am naturally kind of drawn to those sorts of things. Like I told you before, I love David Lynch movies. This felt like one. Uh, very, very different. And I like that. So um, if you like odd, twisted, weird, I think it's worth a read. Uh, especially if you, if you can still pick it up for a couple bucks. It's totally worth it. So... That was Black Mad Wheel by Josh Mallerman. What do you got going on this weekend? I'm going to finish this project up. Um, and I think you'll get to see it next week at some point. We'll see. Uh, and I'm currently reading a new book, which I'm excited to talk about. So we'll probably do a review on Monday because I'll probably finish this book. Um, it's called Harmony Black, if you want to look it up. Yeah, let me know what you got going on in the comments. Thank you for being here as always. 
Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know sounds smart is travail. It is a noun and a verb, meaning pain and suffering due to a mental or physical hardship or to endure such pain and suffering. Charlotte recently had to endure the travail of going an entire week without her family's Olympic-sized swimming pool because the pool had developed a crack. Travail, T-R-A-V-A-I-L. Just could you imagine having to not swim for a whole week?